I am a huge fan of auto scroll, and I know everybody primarily hates them. <laughs> but I try to make them slow so it's not too ridiculous. I'm Michael Herbster. I've worked on Shovel Knight, and this is my Mario Maker level. I initially thought I would be working in the water tile set of any of the Mario games and ended up settling on Mario 3 with an airship auto scroll level. The challenges of water levels in general are ridiculous in my opinion anyways. Um, that's probably one of our hardest levels that we strung together in Shovel Knight, which is Iron Whale uh, Treasure Knight. And that level alone I think had eight redos. And like it was a good month or two worth of work and it would be I'd go through and then me and Sean would play it and I'd hate it and, the, and it would just repeat like that. Um, it's truly a trial to put together a good water level in my opinion. Um, after playing through the level several times and evaluating the physics of Mario 3 versus Mario World, I felt the level was tighter in a Mario 3 environment. Making sure that your levels have less going on with them can be a huge help. Making sure that you're sticking to a set of objects and enemies, as few, not necessarily as few as possible, but feel right for the level. Um, I think for mine I'm only using the wrench tossing enemy along with Koopa Troopas uh, red shell particulars. And then the objects that I chose were the fire pillars from 3 along with the cannons from 3. With limiting myself in those choices, it allows me to focus on making sure that the experience can be ramped accordingly. Another thing that concerns me is Mario 1, you couldn't go backwards. So the fact that you can do that in this instantly throws me off every time I start playing it because I'm like, okay, this is Mario. And then I start to try to run left just to get away from something. And when the whole screen scrolls, instead of me going up to an imaginary like left wall that always follows me, it throws me off really bad. This mitigates that concern for me because you're forced to always go right, so left is never an option. I, I would say that it's limiting because I'm forcing that onto the player, but at the same time, that's the vibe that I'm going for with the game is in order to make you feel pressure that is just going to be the screen's scroll rate. Like I, I feel that that middle section that I just pulled off might be a little too hard, so I'm going to re put, push it all the way to the back to allow the player to get a breathing room and much like how we introduced these guys here, I want to do an introduction to the actual cannonball versus like, hey, here's 15 cannons shooting off. Um, and then that way it's at least ramped so that the player doesn't, isn't like just throwing this completely ridiculous thing before we get to the next thing. And you know what, we can leave that there. The coins can help as like a bread, bread trail for the player to follow and it keeps their eyes focused on hopefully what's coming up. Um, since we did an auto scroll, the coins might not necessarily be needed, but they're still a factor of fun in collecting them. Making sure to stick with simplicity can help quite a bit. Uh, there's always a time and a place to have fun with all the objects that you can, but also thinking about what you're placing and how someone may react helps quite a bit. I feel that it, with specifically the fire pillars towards the end of the level is very climactic and it helps promote just like the end of the level. So you feel like you got this big burst of energy right at the end in order to finish the level out.
Mm-hmm. 